Hey everybody. Now I'm going to talk about the process of 18650 mounting your camera. You may have heard me mention the phrase 18650 mod a few times on some of my videos. Well, in simple terms, it's just the process of modifying a camera to use 18650 lithium ion cells as a power source rather than the camera's original power source, which would be, for example, let's say an MP60 lithium ion pack. Or, for example, this little pack that goes with the Sanyo cameras. Or, in the instance with the ZI6, just your plain old double A's. So, essentially, um, back in 2016, I got the amazing idea of 18650 modding um, because of this ZI, not ZI6, but ZI10 Play Touch. Um, I got this thing used off of eBay many years many years ago. The battery that was in it was not in good condition. Um, you'd be lucky to get a um, an hour. Yeah, you'd be lucky to get an hour worth of runtime out of the thing for the battery goes dead. And I was facing the um, choice of having to go buy a replacement battery off of Amazon, which may not actually be the full capacity that the original pack was. Um, you know, I had that choice, or I could 18650 mod it. Because essentially, 2016 was the year that I started harvesting lithium ion cells out of laptops, out of laptop batteries. And I had quite a few extras, more than I really needed just for flashlights. And I was like, okay, let's go ahead and give this a try. So, this camera right here went from having. Let's say a maximum runtime of maybe one to two hours on the factory ba battery pack, which I think was a 900 million power pack. Um, now this thing can go for nine hours, nine hours of record time on these two 18650s. These here are actually um, 3,000 million power 4.3 five volt cells, and I use this camera daily almost for time lapsing. Construction, <laughs> um, actually, I use this to time lapse construction work at my place of work, and been using this for the past several months just for that. And of course, I've been using this camera for time lapsing um, clouds, thunderstorms, all the good stuff. It's primarily what you want to use this thing for is time lapsing stuff. And you got to have you got to have a good amount of battery store battery capacity to actually do that. Um, and this thing does it perfectly. So. That's one thing about that's one nice advantage you have with 18650 modding is your batteries don't go dead on your nerves often, um, especially if you do the parallel method that I've done here. Now you can actually you can you can actually buy um, battery holders that just have one cell in them, which even then you would still get an improvement in runtime considering a lot of your 18650s just alone one cell alone is usually um, Around 2,000 to 3,400 million hours, depending on the kind of cells you have. These cells here are actually 1,900 million hours. They're generics. They come out of a replacement laptop pack, generic replacement pack. These are um, 22 million hour cells. These are LG Kims out of a Toshiba pack, just for example. So, with these two cameras here. The process of 18650 modding was really easy. You just essentially um, put in place of the original battery this thing. Whatever I had, I had another one laying around here somewhere. There it is. It's just a little um, parallel 18650 holder with some wires that you would that you would connect up to a device. And the only thing I have to say with this, if you do the parallel method, you've got to be very careful. Very careful because, um, let's say if you insert one cell, like for, say you insert one cell going this way and one cell going that way, you have a dead short. So, this is not something for your kids to be playing around with. Um, I don't recommend doing this mod if you're actually familiar with lithium ion batteries and know how to properly handle them. Um, I can't stress it enough. It's very important. So, on the play touch, for example, I just simply did 
the direct connect. Um, directly soldered this to the little terminals where the battery used to plug in. For example, on this Sanyo camera, which will be our subject today, this is your typical positive negative with a T in the center. See positive over here, no positive over here, negative over here with the T in the center. The T is actually a thermistor read. Um, these little battery packs generally have a little circuit board in them that has a thermistor on it. And offer, they offer basic level protection. So they have a little thermistor built in that monitors the temperature of the battery. So that way when your device is charging that battery, um, it can know the temperature of it. So I don't recommend using, when you, when you 18650 mod the camera, I don't recommend using the device to charge up the batteries. Or, yeah, the 18650 I always suggest that you have a third party, you know, I'm sorry, not, well, a third party, but I mean, external charger such as this one here such as this charger right here, the BT-C3400. There are many different chargers you can choose from, but you always want to have a separate charger for charging your cells. I, at least I recommend anyway. Um, so, as I mentioned, initially with, with the Z10 Play Touch, I did Direct Connect, but later I started including a 3-amp fuse in series with the pack between the camera and the batteries which I am going to retrofit this one with the fuse just to be safe um, that way if anything in the camera shorts the fuse will blow that way your batteries aren't shorted so with these two cameras as mentioned it's just a simple drop in now with this DXG 5B6 video it's kinda interesting um, because this camera here can take either four triple A's or an MP60 lithium ion pack so it involved the process of tricking the switch in this camera. There's a little, there's a little um, like a little push button switch inside this little compartment that I had to um, I essentially gutted the switch and soldered and this bridged it with solder to always make the camera think it's got a lithium ion pack inserted. That way it knows that because with the, with the four triple A's you're getting around let's see. Um, around 4.8 to 6 volts depending on the kind of batteries you have in there um, yeah I got that right 4.8 volts to 6 volts um, versus the you know maximum 3 point no, maximum 4.2 to minimum 3 volts generally with lithium ion um, nominal 3.7 volts so this way the camera knows when to shut off <laughs> okay so that's out of the way. Um, by the way, these two cameras, the packs are ready for 3.7 volts. That's a key thing. There are some cameras out there that may be rated for um, 7.4 volts, for example. That's essentially two lithium ion cells in series. Now, that might be a bit more tricky. Um, I think it could be doable, <clears throat> but you would have to you would have to observe. You had to take a look at the original pack because usually packs like that I do think have a balance wire that connects. Let's say this is negative, positive, negative, positive. A balance wire would generally connect up in here. That way the camera can monitor the voltages of both cells, you know, each cell for both discharge and charge regions. That way you won't ever discharge any cells. So I do think it's there like theoretically possible. I've never tried it, but it, I think it could be doable. So um, a couple more things I want to mention. Um, some cameras out there, particularly the ones that don't have the simple three terminal <clears throat> hookups on them for the three three point seven volt cells. For example. Um, when I was looking at cameras online, I was seeing some from Sony, for example, the Bloggy. They had your three terminals here, but had a different terminal over here. Some cameras may be able to detect, they may have like a little, for example, in print cartridges, you know, for example, they have, a lot of them have little chips built into the, car, into the cartridge. Well, 
the camera may interface with the circuit board inside this. Um, now these usually have just real simple in um, protection for overload, um, you know, short circuit, over discharge and overcharge, stuff like that. That way let's set the battery for example drains below a certain threshold it may cut off and deactivate the pack. Um, with the Sony Blog EHG for example I, th I think with some of the, the Sony cameras and maybe other brands too some cameras may interface with the battery using a different terminal and may know if the battery is genuine or not it may refuse to work let's say if you just hook up positive and negative and nothing else so it's not guaranteed to work um, this is more a do it at your own risk kind of thing it's just I can't be responsible if you mess your camera up kind of thing so that being aside, let's go ahead and continue on here. Okay, let's go and talk about the ZI6 a little bit here because it's a different camera. It uses it originally uses um, double A's to power itself, um, which two double A's in series, your nominal voltage, at least with nickel metal hydrides, is 2.4 volts. You know, 1.2 times 2. Um, 1.4 volts max charge. That's okay. 1.4 volts general maximum charge. Okay, that gets you 2.8 volts. Okay, minimum, at least with this camera, the minimum shutoff was about 2.2. So 1.1 volts per cell, maybe 2 volts minimum at the least. If you take lithium ion batteries down that low, um, you're going to do some serious damage to them. Because lithium ions don't like to go below 3 volts generally. Some may be okay with down to 2.5 but you definitely don't want to run them down below 2.9 volts loaded so um, you have to do an extra modification to the camera in this case um, now there are some cameras out there if you look at the bottom of the camera it, it may say 2.4 volts 3 volts 3.7 volts um, for example I sent a Nikon Coolpix camera that actually had three different voltages specified it took double A's but it had three different voltages specified that it could run on which you know the 3.7 volt number is your generally your lithium ion number um, for a single cell so it, it you would have to do some research on your own to figure that one out with the Kodak the, um, the, the ZI6 for example the power supply, um, the DC to DC conversion chip inside this little camera, its data sheet is okay with the full lithium ion voltage of, let's say, 4.2 volts. The camera had no problem running at all. Now, I have, actually have videos on this channel from back in early 2017 of doing this mod to this camera. So I, I specify more about that there. Um, but going back to the discharge issue in simple terms what I did was I series in the circuit a diode now I don't know what I did with the diodes I have a pack of them somewhere it's just I use a diode of a power supplies um, AC rectification stage there's a diode that's ready for 3 amps the diode is actually right there if you can see it the camera will focus or not the diode is actually right down there and I have it out in the open so that way it can dissipate its heat better because it does get quite toasty but essentially what I've done here is in between this let's see in between this and the um, rest of the camera um, of course with the fuse I put the diode in forward biased so that way you get a voltage drop of about 0.7 volts um, so that means when um, the camera is seeing about 2.2 the batteries are at 2.9 and I tested this out and it works perfectly um, the cells don't mind it at all I've been running these particular cells these generics I've been running these things in this camera throughout all last summer doing time lapse of thunderstorms and things like that and these batteries they work just fine um, they're fine with it and so that's how I that that's kind of the process you have to deal with when doing the ZI6 or a similar camera to that such as the, D, the DXG567V 
you know, a camera that takes um, double A's. Now, like I, like I mentioned, um, it really depends on what your camera is um, capable of doing. Um, that's really something you have to research on your own. So, I know, I'm sorry, that's, I've spent several minutes co discovering that subject alone. So, let's go ahead and move on <laughs> to the next part of this whole thing. Where we actually 18650 mod this Sanyo camera. So yeah, I got the Sanyo Zaki CG10 off of off of eBay last week. Um, it was like eighteen dollars and something plus shipping and handling, which wasn't much. Um, it was twenty dollars, you know, twenty something bucks, which is a good price for this little camera. Camera's in relatively decent condition. It came with the charger, came with the battery, and all that good stuff. So I, you know, I kind of feel bad 18650 modding this thing, but. I plan on looking on eBay again for another one of these because I would like to get this for my mom. She would definitely love this camera. So, in theory, it's a win-win because I'd have an extra pack because I'm not going 18650 model camera that they're going to get. <laughs> um, have an extra pack, have the charger, all that good stuff. So that way, if I find one on eBay that doesn't have the charger or even doesn't have a battery, I'll have a battery for it. Okay, that's out of the way. Um, what we're going to do here is see... How difficult it is to get this cover off here because what I like to do is I would like to take a look in here to see if there is open space inside here. If you look at the DXG 5B6 V, you may see it uh, cut away a lot of the plastic and actually mounted the battery pack right inside because there was room for it. There was this open space in there. I was able to mount it right in so that way the camera still retains its pistol grip feel. It has a good feel to it when you have it in your hand. It's not overly large, at least in my opinion, anyway. So, there's that. To start the process of 18650 modding, you have to consider two options. You can consider being invasive to the camera, meaning actually taking this cover off and actually cutting into the thing. Yeah, cutting into the camera um, cover. I did that. I did this on the DXG 5B6 feed because there was lots of room inside here. And had I not done that, the pack would be, for example, sticking way out here. And that wouldn't be very comfortable to be holding. So I was able to cut out a lot of plastic and actually mount this pack more flush with the camera so that way. It still retains its good pistol grip feel. And this camera is a lot thicker than this one. So that brings us to option number two. Option number two is not being invasive at all. Um, it's just mounting the pack externally to the camera. You can't get much more simple than that. You just remove this here and actually mount the pack on the exterior of the camera. So that being said, we're going to have to go ahead and get rid of this cover. So yeah, we're going to have to hurt the camera just a little bit. Now as you've seen with the, the play touch, that's another example of a non-invasive 18650 mod. Just mount the thing right to the front of the camera. And also, I, wanted to, I meant to mention that, um, also meant to mention that some cameras, like the Play Touch, for example, their exterior is grounded to the negative terminal. So you have to be careful, make sure that you have your positive leads everywhere. Make sure they are well insulated. So, another thing to just get out of the way. So we have the cover out of the way. And of course, I like this little cut, this little lens cover here. It might get in the way <laughs> later on, but see, there's the other option, which is just mounting the pack right to the side of the camera, non-invasively, just mount it externally to the camera. And you see, my key concern is making sure this thing is going to be comfortable to hold in cases I'm out filming with it out in the wild for example um, not here not here at the desk so that's two options 
that I can consider. So if I just mount it external like this, it's gonna it's gonna take up quite a bit of space. Um, now another thing I could do with this thing is I can mount it right up on the side. That way I would retain the the really thin grip this thing has. So yeah, there's there's definitely some options. There's definitely plenty of options on the table with this camera. Um, your camera may vary. So, for example, like that. So I'm gonna stop recording for a moment and think about it for a second. Okay, guys, guess what just happened? Yes, the battery. The battery went dead in this DXG. 85V. Isn't that wonderful? That's why I'm here doing this video today. So I'm here 18.6 video on this Sanyo. Because I, I, I can't have batteries just go dead and not be able to keep on recording. <laughs> can't have that. So I'm now filming with the DXG 5B6 v which unfortunately does not have quite as good of audio. So I apologize about that. However, this that camera also has a flip out LCD set where I can monitor the video while I'm doing this. Okay, so it's going to continue on. I decided I'm going to open this up and have a look inside. Um, one thing I want to note, and this is very important, is inside cameras like this that have a have photo flash on them. They tend to have a photo flash capacitor, which actually that's always the case, I believe, unless it's LED. Um, when it's, but when it's strobe flash, you generally have a photo flash capacitor. And that capacitor is usually rated for around 3 to 400 volts DC. And it can definitely hold a charge, even while there's no battery in the camera, even if the camera is sitting in a drawer for a couple of years. So that's it's, it's very important that you exercise extreme caution. Okay, let's go and see if we can open this up here. Okay, it looks like we have more screws to take out. I just need to take a small peek inside to see if there's any room we can spare in here. And yep, I just uh, we've already spotted the photo flash capacitor. Yep, <laughs> there it is. So now we know where it's at. So it looks like that's going to be a big fat no. So in the in the spot where the DXG five B six V had an uh, empty void. In this camera, the photo flash capacitor is in that spot, so we cannot do that. So that, mean, that means we're going to have to have the battery pack on the exterior of the camera. So yeah, if you do open up a camera for any reason that has a strobe flash built into it, use extreme caution. Because... And that 300 something volts DC will definitely throw you across the room. It may send you to the hospital. It may kill you. And get this, I have not used the flash on this camera yet. But that don't mean that doesn't mean that the camera doesn't, in advance, charge up the flash capacitor. That way it's ready to go when you, should you decide to take a picture and need flash. So, exercise caution with photo flash capacitors. Okay. So, we're going to go the non-invasive non route with this camera. We're just going to return the screws to where they were. Alrighty. So 
So our options look to be, as mentioned, I do it like, like this. We got this big void, <laughs> which I'm not real crazy about. Or we could do it like this. In that case, I had to run the, the you know, wires down through here and then to here. You know, all that good stuff. So, I'm thinking it's going to be something on the lines. Of this now the reason why we can't mount it down like this for example is because down here is where your tripod screws in you can't have this sticking way out here when your tripod mounts right here also we can't do it like this. Can't do it like that because, well, it'd be kind of hard to hold this thing, really. So, <laughs> it looks like we'll do it just like that right there. Okay, I'm continuing this the following day. The DXG 85V is charged back up. Let's see how long it lasts. Um, yeah, late last night I was, um, let's just say I hurt the outside of a laptop battery. One of the um, pieces of plastic from an old laptop battery I harvested a while back, um, I tore some pieces apart. I did two things. Um, one thing is I used this here to make a cover that sides right over the top of the pack which is very nice I think it's it makes me feel a little more comfortable carrying this um, camera in a case or whatnot um, I meant to make a few more of these for my existing cameras with these battery things on the side of them also I have did some mods to this battery box I rerouted the wiring instead of going out through here well, the positive still goes out through here, but the negative goes out through here now, instead of right next to the positive. Because I have ultimately decided that I'm going to mount the battery box like this. I think I initially said, no, I wasn't going to do it like that, but I changed my mind. I'm going to mount it on, right on the side, right up here right on the side of the thing. The reason for that is because if I mounted it like this there's not a whole lot of area for the um, actual battery holder to actually um, be secured to. Only the top and the bottom which would make it easy to pop loose. So, if I do it up here, it's a whole lot more secure. In that way, also, the camera itself, the way you hold the thing, none of that is impacted. So, you, it, that way, uh, if I'm actually carrying this out doing a video, let's say an elevator or something, um, I can just hold it just like this, just like it was designed for. So I'm doing things a little backwards here. Normally I do the soldering first and then secure the box to the um, case, but I'm doing things different. I'm going to instead first secure the box to the camera like this and then I'll solder up the fuse and the wiring to this. So our glue gun should be, oh yeah, it's warmed up now. 
didn't take long at all. <clears throat> That's why I rerouted this wire over here because I didn't want the I didn't want to be really close together coming out of here. I wanted to actually have the negative over here. And what I'll do is I'll actually retain the original cover that goes over the camera. But I have to chip out a small piece on this side and on that side for the wires to go in. And I can of course fill that with black glue. Yeah, this is um, this hot glue I have is black, so it'll work perfect on this black camera. See, I'm pretty impressed with that. Okay, so now it's time to go ahead and secure the box on to the camera. I can't have it out too far like this because otherwise it would obstruct the, the uh, right side view of the camera. So I'm gonna have it about say like that. I think that'll work perfect there. Okay, here goes nothing. And this black hot glue works perfect for my camera modding because um, it's very secure. It looks good. Um, yeah, it's very secure, very durable, and actually looks decent. Looks better than the clear stuff. The clear stuff, honestly, I think looks like crap. And also, this glue is not nearly as stringy as the um, the clear stuff. And also, you can't have a big blob coming through the box. I gotta smear that down. As I believe I mentioned earlier in the um, video, with these parallel boxes, you've got to be careful with them when you mount the batteries because you don't want to mount the batteries backwards. And you don't want to have them mounted this way and that way because obviously you'd have a dead short. So when you use parallel boxes like this, it's not for anything you want to have your kids or, or in some cases, your wife <laughs> messing with. Because um, if they put the thing in backwards and the thing sparks in the and the steel wire starts to glow red, you'll, they may panic. Um, years ago when I first got these um, battery holders, when I, like literally after I first unboxed them, I just was toying around with them. I, because what's interesting is the seller did not even note whether they were series or parallel. And I messaged him about, about the uh, whole incident and he, he took care of it real quick, I think. Um, Essentially, what I did is I had one mounted the back in the opposite direction, and it created a short. And the um, wire that the springs go to started glowing. I immediately pushed the battery back, and no, it was over here on this side. Immediately pushed the battery back, and it disconnected the uh, connection, let it cool off, and it took a second, and this pulled the thing out. So yeah, that's kind of scary. So. If you do use a two times parallel or you know, anything, any sort of box that has multiple cells in parallel, you gotta be careful about that because there is no reverse protection on these things. There might be packs out there that could offer such a thing, but usually, I think that would involve diodes, which will introduce some sort of forward biased voltage drop. 
which could be a problem if you're um, doing a similar mod because your batteries well according to the camera will be more closer to dead when they're not actually dead yet okay so what I'll do is I'll go back and further secure this box later on after I have it all together because I'm going to try to conceal this wire inside here like that the positive and I'll put some glue over that and I'll do the final touch ups like putting glue over these terminals and all that good stuff yeah it's a cheap little battery box but it does its job now one thing I'm wondering is will I still be able to use the included nope I won't be able to use this anymore that's unfortunate let me take this string off here and see if it works afterwards because it is quite nice to have that lens cover although it's not actually required put it on backwards <laughs> let's see if it'll fit on backwards no not quite oh well oh well okay so here comes the more fun stuff I'm going to be um, introducing the fuse which I'm going to think I'll actually mount the fuse down inside here Let me grab a fuse it's these 3 amp automotive fuses they're usually relatively easy to solder to here's a close look at one Yeah, I picked these up at AutoZone. Um, you can probably get a better deal on the things off of Amazon or Flea Bay or something like that. I like the smaller ones, the ones that are smaller than this. Um, I have one that's actually on the um, modded ZI6. I try. To rem I have to remember next time I go to the um, auto parts U pull to go scavenge for fuses because they let me have fuses for free. All right. So, what I'm gonna do on this one is I got to figure out how much wire we're gonna need for the fuse run and for the um, connection between the fuse and the terminal over here. And what, what makes things more fun is my freaking wire strippers broke last week. So I gotta use a pair of nail clippers to strip the wires, and you gotta be careful stripping when you don't have an actual wire stripper. Um, because sometimes it may just cut the wire completely instead of stripping the insulation off. In addition, when I go to connect to these little terminals I'm going to probably add some heat shrink onto the wire end to cover these up because there's just not a whole lot of area there to work with um, it's kind of unfortunate the terminals on these on this particular camera are nowhere near as big as let's say when it takes an MP60 pack so we got the negative here and the positive over here and you definitely want to make sure you don't get those backwards when you go to solder up to it. Yeah, it's definitely nice filming with this better DXG camera because it has that autofocus. And the sound is definitely better since I've done the mic mod. Okay, so my plan is to put the fuse like right in here. You know, something like this. Just hold it in with some hot glue, just a little bit of hot glue. 
that fuse should never blow unless there's something bad wrong with the camera. <laughs> so, yeah, it's funny, one of the instructors at my place of work was like, like, you didn't put a holder in for the fuse, why don't you just put a holder in? Well, I'm like, well, if the fuse pops, there's obviously something bad wrong with the camera. So, <laughs> yeah, if the fuse blows, there's always, there's going to be, it's, you're not going to be simply changing out a fuse. Let's put it that way. Okay. So I'm thinking right here is where I will hook up to the fuse. And it don't hurt to have a little bit of extra wire in there because we got plenty of room for, for leftover wire. It's better to have too much wire than not enough wire. So I'm going to cut it right about there, I think. I'm gonna do it. Okay, here we go. I gotta have this extra wire. Well, off in the floor. And here comes the fun part. Stripping the insulation off. This is how I used to do it before I got the um, wire strippers years ago. Definitely got to order me some. There we go. I probably could have got a little more off of there, but that's okay. And since we already have this here stripped, let me see how well this will go from, see, here to the terminal. It'll probably take some off, actually. Or. I may not. Try to do like um let's say a backwards S or a two or a Z if you want to call it that. Since this is already stripped, we're good to go. We use this longer strip side for the fuse. And here, we don't need a whole lot of stripped wire. Because we're going straight to that terminal there. Okay, there's that. And another reason why I'll be using the heat shrink tubing is because of having, you know, in the case I have some extra loose wire, you just cover it with heat shrink tubing. So that'll go between the fuse and this terminal. You can better see that. See what I'm doing here. 
Okay, I was kind of a bummer I can't zoom in with the uh, DXG 85 e without getting way out of focus. Um, that's kind of unfortunate. I'd be curious to see how this thing here does with doing such a thing. So also, we need to go ahead and prep this negative. And all it has to do is just go straight to the um, go straight to the terminal. So that's not too much to it right there. And it don't hurt to have a little bit of extra, so we'll probably cut it right about there, I think. There we are. Now comes the fun stuff. It's like a heat up soldering iron. Okay, off camera I've gone ahead and solder up this fuse. I'm going to try to get her um, wires on there this solder is a little big but it'll do just try to tinder wire up a little bit there Okay, that's on there. Now for the other one. And where I pretend. Be careful not to melt the fuse. There, that should do it. The fuse itself is okay. A little hot, but it's okay. Gonna grab some heat shrink. All we gotta do is just slip it over the ends of the wire. Let's go ahead and 
up our wires. Probably should have twisted the wire ends on here first. <laughs> it's not too late in this case. All it really does here is we add just add a little add some of the flux onto the wire and some of the solder as well. It helps with getting the wire attached let's go and do our positive which was negative as well all the way don't want to melt the wire sorry if I don't get all this on video but sometimes priorities have to be priorities make sure I do it right rather than get it on video and mess up And one thing to note here is this connector is soldered to the board on the other side. And if you leave your iron on too long and the heat is able to transfer through that metal, it can actually melt the um, can actually melt the wire. You don't want that. Not at all. Guess what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and prep this prep these terminals I tell you it's hard to keep a steady hand sometimes it can be very difficult what's nice about these terminals is in every case that I have done an 18650 mod. Um, due to these terminals usually being gold plated, solder just goes right to it just fine, no problem. And usually it's pretty easy to actually solder all the stuff onto. Make sure our heat shrink tube is well back. So that way we don't prematurely shrink it. And of course we make sure to double check the battery itself. Double check the battery. Yep, positive on the right, negative on my left. Let's go ahead and attach this. Could be better, I think. Matter of fact, since we have plenty of excess, I can just trim the excess off of there where it's kind of spreading out where I don't want to spread out. As I mentioned, sorry if I don't get this on video, but I got priorities gotta be priorities here. Make sure I'm careful what I'm doing, I can see exactly what I'm doing here. Seems pretty well secure. I'll go ahead and hit it one more time. That one's on there. Let's go and do our negative. And again, make sure the heat shrink is well back. We'll do kind of the same thing. I'm going to trim some excess off of there.
Yeah, no clippers do are, are good for many things other than clipping fingernails, I must say. I'm going to move the camera just a little bit so you can probably see what I'm doing here. I don't burn myself by having it twisted around so far. See if I can zoom in without losing too much focus. You just can't do it, can it? That's unfortunate. So we'll see how the Zacti does. Again, you may still not be able to see what I'm doing here, but I'm sorry. Oh well. <laughs> Trying to burn myself or any um, neighboring wires. I think that's on there pretty good. Uh, there's some I can make some improvement there. All right, since we have a connection, we can now do a power on um, self-test. Well, power on test. Not really testing itself because I'm doing a testing. Move the camera back to a different spot. All right. Once I get the soldering, well, I'm done with the soldering. I just got to do a little bit of heat shrinking. Once that's completed, I can um, shut off the fan. Alright, so I'll go and grab me a cell. Pop it in and um, see how this thing does. And of course, gotta be careful to make sure I don't put it in backwards. Okay, it's in there. Let's see if this thing powers on. It does seem to be a little slow at first when you don't have a battery in it for a while. There it goes. Yeah, it's real slow. And of course, since the batteries have been out for quite a while, it doesn't know the date and time or nothing like that. So it has passed the power on test. So we know this thing is good to go. Let's go ahead and remove our battery and wrap up this 18650 mod. Now all we gotta do is just go ahead and put our um, heat shrink up close as we can unfortunately it's not going to quite slip over the reason why I did the heat shrink in the, in the first place was um, in case I had some excess wire it could cover up the excess but maybe to get the negative to cover it, cover it up just got to be careful that's the meat that's the primary thing because we can get it on there 
All right, that's as good as we're going to get. <laughs> now we're going to use the um, soldering iron as a heat source to shrink our wire. Because I'm definitely not going to introduce a lighter this close to the... Um, to the plastic and all that good stuff. You don't have to shrink up much because the wire ain't really much thinner than the heat shrink itself. Okay, that's done. Let's go and unplug our soldering iron. And go ahead and turn off our fan. The reason why I run the fan is to help vent the fumes from soldering, obviously. Okay. Now our glue gun is heated back up. Time to go ahead and do some final touches here. Go ahead and glue our fuse into place. Then we'll also add some glue to help secure our wires. Don't need to overdo it with the glue set way. Um, in case we need to go in here and work on anything, we can pull that stuff off of there. Just need to, we need just a little bit there to hold things together. But um, not so much that you can't get them apart when you intentionally try to disassemble the thing for any reason that you may have to disassemble it. Now let's go ahead and get a cover. And we gotta remove some material off of the corners. So that way we can that way the wires can come out.
And there you have it. That's the cover back on. And if I need to get in here, I can pop this loose. And I'm going to probably also, yeah, I'll be adding some glue on the ends of this. It'll help secure this piece and also make things look a little nicer, I think. I also want to make sure that this cover is not scratching up the wires any. Okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to secure the negative wire over here. With some black glue. It's going to be a rather clean looking 18650 mod, I think. <laughs> Don't think all my 18650 mods look a little wacky. <laughs> look a little funny. You don't know, it's not what we typically see every day on a camera. <laughs> Big battery box on the side of it. So only last year I was in Presbyterian Medical Center and they uh, decided to kick me out for filming elevators. Um, I had the Play Touch camera which was already 18650 mod at the time. I don't know if they noticed it or not. I'd imagine if you took this on an on a, um, airplane, um, the um, TSA would probably be a little concerned about what you have there. They'll probably treat it like any sort of other uh, device that has lithium ion batteries. But I wonder if they'll treat it any differently since you've 18650 modded it. If that glue is dry, I'll go ahead and add some additional glue. All the way back to the cover here. And while that dries, I'll go ahead and add some glue on the back side of this one. Be careful that I don't accidentally um, glue any buttons over here. And I actually need to reload this glue gun for the first time I've ever had to reload it. <laughs> I've used this for the Playtouch 18650 mod, the ZI6 18650 mod, the DXG 5B6V 18650 mod, a Sanyo VPC, I think 100 or 1000. 18650 mod. That camera, um, unfortunately, the audio is crap on it. And when I tried to upgrade it, the freaking uh, PCB when I was soldering in another mic, it the soldering iron melted a couple of SMD components. So that's trash. <laughs> that's unfortunate. So I'm going to be on the lookout for another PCB on eBay. Well, or for another parts camera at least, I might get that back up and running. This is actually a 1080p camera, a cheater 1080p. 1440 by 1080 but um it doesn't focus near as well as this Zacti does the Zacti is actually newer I think a far superior camera 
which is why I only, which is why I wanted to be very careful when doing this 18650 mod. I'd have felt really bad if I messed this thing up. That's why I spent so much time and nearly had a headache thinking of how I was going to do this mod. Because <laughs> I didn't want to mess the camera up. I did not want to mess it up. At all. It does get a little stringy once it gets really hot, but still nowhere near as stringy as the um, the clear stuff. I think. Go ahead and put some glue over these terminals. Also put some glue over these terminals or the negatives. Not quite as big of a deal to have them if they're not covered up, but I'd still prefer to be covered up. Just it looks better, I think. this camera out just a little bit also going to go ahead and put just a little bit of glue over this negative over here and this positive over here Okay. Let's see, here's a little makeshift cover. Make sure that's dry first. It is. A little cover just slips right over like that and it covers up the cells. This way you can easily transport this camera in a bag or whatnot. <laughs> Although it is quite wide over here, so that might be a little tricky. You wouldn't be able to slip it into your pocket really easily. But that's okay. Like I, like I mentioned earlier in the video, if it weren't for that photo flash capacitor being right there, if there wasn't if it wasn't for there being components right here in this area behind this like menu button, for example, I could have chipped away a lot of this plastic and done the um, pack along the side like I've done with the DXG 5B6V. In the DXG 5B6V, I've already carried it around quite a bit. Um, it's, it's quite easy to carry around. The Play Touch is pretty easy to carry around too. I carry around my laptop bag a lot. Pretty much five days a week. Okay. So it's time to go and load this up with some cells. And I gotta get used to knowing what direction to stick them in there. It's pretty obvious when you look at the springs, you know what direction they go. Which <laughs> is funny how I would ever get that backwards like I did back in 2016 when I first got these little packs now the only camera I can um, for example the only camera that I'm able to reverse protect let's say if the, if both batteries get put in reverse uh, the, only, the only camera I can reverse protect is the ZI6 because it has the diode that's Ford bias to begin with. That diode would protect the camera in the case you put the batteries in backwards. 
but it wouldn't pre it wouldn't prevent prevent a short circuit if you done one this way and one that way. I'm doing now is I'm adding some electrical tape over this uh, backwards notation on the um, battery box. See how these battery boxes? Um, this is what confused me when I first got these. Okay, now I can go and load in some fresh cells. Because our 18650 mod has been completed. This camera can now go into service. So yeah, I gotta be careful loading this one. Because I'm new to it, new to this particular camera. Not sure where that solder, that piece of solder there came from. It came off the desk somewhere, obviously, but um, yeah. I'm gonna load in our second cell. And with 18650s, obviously the way you can tell which is positive, which is negative. That's your positive there. That's your negative there. You can also tell by this little ring at the top of the cell. It's where the cell is put together. That's your positive side. And of course in a parallel box you make sure they match. And we can go ahead and power this up. See if it starts up on its own this time. I believe what it is is when this thing um, has batteries out for a while it loses its configuration. The um, RTC is powered off of the um, batteries that are inserted into the camera. And when it loses its configuration it doesn't automatically power up. And when you press the power button it has to go through He has to go through his own little setup, internal checks and setup. Um, also, yeah, I'll go ahead and set the date and time. Why not? So, it is definitely not 2009. Current time. Is 1821 in 24 hour format. Okay, um, the camera has reverted to default settings because, of course, it being um, not having a battery supply to keep the RTC alive. It's kind of like the CMOS battery in your computer. If it if it loses its C, if the CMOS battery goes dead, it loses its configuration. So we we'll have to go into the um, menu, and right now it has the real basic menu um, but what we can do is go down switch to detailed normal menu detailed normal menu okay and now we have the nice menu that has all those settings Yeah, this is this is a very nice camera. Um, it's loaded, slam full of, of features. And now that it's 18650 mod, it should go a pretty dang good while. 
on a um, <laughs> on a charge. So then you go into the settings. Um, first of all, oh, it was on this menu here. We are going to turn off all these freaking sounds. I can't stand it. All off. Perfect. That's much better. Especially the um, the store to internal memory. I don't need to hear that. I can look at the screen and see if it's got a memory card installed or not. And I don't need the music either when you start and turn the thing off. Okay, so we're going to go to shortcuts. We're going to set our shortcuts. You can do yeah, there's lots of them. Um, There is autofocus lock. There's the exposure lock. So I'm going to do focus first. And display on and off. That's nice. So if I'm actually using this to do a time lapse video, I can turn the display off. That way it helps save battery. It's touching the battery to make sure it's not warm or anything. Which of course the fuse, if any, if anything, short the fuse will blow. Do you want a focus lock? And exposure. And when I press menu, it'll show me where everything's at. See, so yeah, as camera is loaded full, full functionality. The only thing I wish I could do, which is probably here in the menu, if I could put that battery indicator out on the screen, that'd be nice. Power save. I'm going to see. I'm going to adjust this up to in 10 minutes because um, I noticed right now it, it shuts off rather quickly. If, if I'm just, you know, a minute, a lot of times you'll spend several minutes prepping the um, scene. You know, you're new, using the camera to get everything prepped up before you actually start recording, and the thing will just randomly just shut off on you. Not particularly nice. Uh, image settings. I'll do vivid. See how this thing is? It's it's um full of um the features, and this is the um, recording menu, all that good stuff. It has a bit has a um built-in video stabilizer which I think is um, digital image stabilization okay so we're going to go ahead and exit the menu so anyways our camera is good to go it is 18650 modded and it's ready for service so before I wrap this up um, no annoying music very nice um, so let's see here this is the little cover. It only, covers, it only actually covers one side, but that's okay. I prefer to have it cover off the positive side anyway. And I will say the camera is a little top heavy <laughs> having the cells up here, but oh well. All I can say is oh well. I think this is the best way I can mount. 18650s on this camera. To wrap this up, I'll show you the battery pack as I was telling you earlier. Um, 
with these battery packs they um it's literally yeah it's gonna get the camera off the tripod for this it's literally what they did is in the factory they printed these boxes in sort of a universal way what they done here you can see the bottom one there is correct for a parallel or and a series but the top when you see how the battery is facing that away on the bottom it says size 18650 or equivalent and up top it says or 18650 x2 that's real you know that's kind of confusing I think they should have had a bin of ones printed for, for a series configuration and a bin of one a bin of ones printed for a parallel configuration so that way it doesn't confuse somebody to accidentally pop in a cell backwards now the springs obviously tell you what direction you should point the cells in um, but like I say if you're not careful and you go by what this here says you could have a dead short and potentially a fire so with these parallel packs you gotta be careful this guy you just gotta be careful with them um, if you hand this over to anybody else besides yourself you make dang sure that you explain to them that you're supposed to put the batteries in a certain way and if you put them in the wrong way what exactly will happen and if you accidentally put one in the wrong way to immediately pull the cell back <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah that is 18650 modding a camera in this case it's the Sanyo Zacti CG10 hope you guys enjoyed this video Thanks for watching. Hey everybody. I sure hope you guys enjoyed this video from Q Computer Channel. Remember to like the video, subscribe to Q Computer Channel for more updates, and remember to tick the bell so that you actually get notified of these updates. Did you know that I am also on a second channel? That's CubeComp MTDX. Over there you'll find videos of bicycling, weather, elevators, and all sorts of other neat and interesting stuff. Feel free to subscribe to that channel as well. And again, I thank you for your support, and thanks for watching this video.